What's up, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of YNR, <sighs> Mariah was getting on my nerves, honestly. I have to be totally honest. Like, Mariah is such a little busybody. Like, I totally, don't get me wrong, I totally understand where she's coming from because she just wants, you know, her mom to be good and to be safe and stuff like that. You know, she wants her mom to focus on her recovery and her fight against uh, breast cancer and stuff like that. I totally get it. I totally get it. And I'm all for that. But at the end of the day, Sharon is still a grown ass woman. Sharon would not have taken on the task of trying to help Adam if, you know, she couldn't, she felt like she couldn't do it or she felt like it was too taxing on her. Sharon is taking care of herself. When she feels too tired, she cuts the, you know, therapy session short. And she basically gets some rest. She knows how to take care of herself, but she wants to help Adam. She genuinely wants to help him. Um, that's just the kind of person she is. You know, she could see he's hurting. She could see that, you know, he's dealing with something major and she just wants to help him. You know what I mean? That doesn't mean she's not taking care of herself and her health and she's still doing that too. So Mariah, of course... It's basically trying to tell Sharon, oh, Adam is the one who broke y'all up and broke her and Ray up in the first place. First of all, Adam did not break her and Ray up. Ray's insecurities broke them up. Like, Sharon kept telling Ray she was not romantically thinking about Adam. He just wouldn't believe it. And so they broke, they broke up. It is what it is. That was on Ray. He's insecure. If he's not secure enough in his relationship with Sharon, that's his problem. That's not Sharon's problem. It's nobody's problem. If Sharon wanted to be with Adam, she would have broke up with Ray or not been involved with Ray and tried to get Adam back. She hasn't tried to do that because she's not thinking about Adam in that manner. So, of course, Mariah goes over and, you know, basically be, you know, go to society to be a busybody again to go talk to uh, Lola about Ray and Sharon Talking about, oh, she don't want to see her mother dragged into Adam's, you know, mess or whatever. Like, Mariah, mind your business. Like, seriously, your mother is grown. She's capable of handling her own affairs. Mind her, mind your business. Mind the business that pays you. Like, why are you all up in her business? Being a little busybody. Like, she knows, Sharon knows what she's doing. So, mind your business. Um... Like, they keep treating Sharon like she's an invalid or something. Like, she knows what she's doing. Calm down. Um, if Like I said, if Ray's not secure enough to be with Sharon, then, you know, he's, his insecurities are showing, and that's on him. That's not Sharon's problem. It's not her fault. Period. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. I am super happy that Lola finally admitted to herself and admitted to Theo what's been bugging her. Basically, she's not over the Kyle situation, which we all knew um, because she just I, I think it's just a nagging question in her head. She just wants to know that her marriage to Kyle meant something to him. Like she wants to know if it was real to him because it was real to her. Plus, she's never been married before. This was her first marriage and she never thought that she would be ended up in this situation divorced almost divorced a year into the marriage she never thought she would be in this situation so it's still fresh for her and she's not fully over it and i'm not i don't blame her for not being over it you know what i mean and she really just one she wants to know if it was real to kyle two she wants to know when did kyle feel like their marriage when did he begin to feel like their marriage was a mistake she just has these nagging questions and I feel like until she gets closure from Kyle and they sit down and have a conversation and they get everything out in the open, it's probably still going to nag her. But I'm glad that, you know, Theo sit there. He sat there and he let her vent and let her just, you know, vent to him about her frustrations and how she feel. Um, I think Lola really needed to get that out. And I'm glad that she did. You know, she finally admitted what was bothering her because I think that was important. She needed to know. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Summer and Kyle are meeting up with Phyllis and Nick at the Grand Phoenix to drop the news on them that they're moving in together. Nick and Phyllis, of course, is late to the meeting because they're having sex again. I really did not want Nick and Phyllis getting back together because that's all they do is have sex. That's literally the basis of their relationship. Sex. 
that's how they ended up together all those years ago. Sex. So it's like nothing has changed all these years later. They got together, what, 13, 14 years ago? And their, their affair started with sex when he was married to Sharon. And look at it 13, 14 years later. Look at them. Still about sex. It's like, why are they back together again? Because that's all they do. I really don't see any romantic chemistry. I'm being totally honest. I see no romantic chemistry between Nick and Phyllis. Sexual chemistry? Sure. Romantic? No. I feel like it's nothing but sex. That's all it is for the two of them. They lack anything. They lack substance. It's like, where is this relationship going? Like, is this just uh, friends with benefits type thing? Because I just don't get it. It's like, that's all they do. Like, even when they showed up to the thing late to the dinner late, even Summer guessed what they were late for. She knew that they were late because they were having sex. Of course. Um, I don't understand why Summer and Kyle were so nervous about telling... Phyllis and Nick that they were moving in together. Y'all are grown. Y'all are grown. Y'all make y'all own money. Y'all do not live under their roof. Why are you so scared to tell them that y'all so nervous for? And Phyllis and Nick were kind of talking like, oh, we're only approving for such and such reason. First of all, Phyllis, nobody needs your approval. Like I said, they're grown. They don't need your approval. What irritated me was, though, that Summer was asking Nick... Because remember, Nick got them a house or whatever when they first got married and he's renovating it or whatever. Summer was basically asking him not to sell the house to strangers when it's finished to sell it to her and Kyle. I'm like, I hope this house is nice. I'm just saying, like, I hope it's beautiful because I feel like Nick's house is a little tacky. So I hope this one is at least better. Um, so, of course, Nick's sitting here talking about, oh, you know, he's not excited about Kyle and Summer reconciling. First of all, Nick, you're the last person to judge. Like, that's the problem with Nick. He's so hypocritical. Like, who are you to judge? Look at all the failed marriages and relationships you done had. And a lot of those were because of your own doing. So who are you to lecture her? I do, however, agree with Nick that Kyle should be divorced first. Like, the divorce should be finalized before they move in together. I do agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Um... But Phyllis, you know, she was on board with it at first, but she let Kyle know, like, you screw over my daughter, it's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> like, Phyllis minced no words with Kyle. She didn't mince not one word. Because you know how Phyllis is. You know, that's her only daughter. She's very protective of Summer. So, you know, of course, she's going to throw a threat in there. Of course, you know, I expected nothing else from Phyllis other than a threat. Um, But I'm glad that, you know... Summer and Kyle are doing their own thing. They're moving in together. I mean, I particularly don't care for their relationship, but kudos to them. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, Adam was pissing me off because let me tell you something. He just wants to continue to be, you know, blame Victor for everything that happened in his life. Um, let me tell you something. Victor even admitted that, you know, him and Hope maybe, you know, made the wrong choice by not immediately getting Adam some help or covering it up or whatever they did. Like, he, he, he has some regrets. But at the same time, Adam's a grown man now. And you know the truth now. So now it's in your hands, like Victor told him. It's in your hands to get help now. You know what I mean? And of course, Adam doesn't want to get any help. He, his, Adam's whole answer to everything is to run away. That's his answer. Because after Victor left and Sharon came over there, she wanted to give him a list of therapists who can help him that are not, you know, personally involved with him. Like, they don't have no personal ties. They can be totally objective. You know, because for Sharon, it kind of is, it definitely is a conflict of interest. But, of course, Adam told him, oh, he doesn't need no therapist. He's leaving town. He won't be found this time. See, that's Adam's problem. Every time the tough get going, his, you know, he, he gets going. You know, every time the going gets tough, Adam gets going. That's the problem. Every time. Every time it's something Adam can't handle, he want to run away. That's not the answer to everything. You can't keep doing that. And it's not fair to Connor. It's not fair to Chelsea. Because he keeps thinking, oh, I'm a monster. I kill people. I decide that. You made a mistake as a child. Why not go to therapy and get to the root of the problem? 
as to why you did what you did, why you reacted the way that you reacted. Why do you currently do the shit that you do? Go get help. That's the best answer for it is to go to a therapist. They can unblock all of that for you. They can go through every little tidbit of your life to get to the root of the problem. Duh. Like he just refuses to just take responsibility. He refuses to get help. He j his answer is just let me run. Like that is so not fair to Connor because you did that before. How many times has Connor had to go through life without you? For like a year or two. And then you pop up. Then you leave again. Like that's not fair to that boy. For you to keep coming in and out of his life like that. That's not fair to him. It's not fair to Chelsea. Because then when you're ready to come back. Then what? They got to just drop their life. And welcome you back with open arms again. That's not fair. You know. And Victor really is genuinely trying to help him. You know. That's his son. And he's trying to help him. Um. So basically. Sharon convinced Adam to stay so she can try to help him the best that she can. Um, so Adam agreed to stay, as he should, because you need to stop running away from your problems and start facing them. Um, so, of course, you know, Nikki, I just feel like Nikki is never going to like Adam. Deep down, I feel like she kind of don't like Abby either. Any child that Victor had outside of her, she, to me, just don't like because it's not her child. You know what I mean? But when Dylan was found out to be her son, she expected Victor to just be cool with it. You're not cool with his two other children, so why should he have to be cool to your little son? Like, come on. Don't be no hypocrite. But it's obvious that Nikki just, you know, sticks her nose up at people. And I do like me some Nikki, but when it comes to Victor's other children, she can be a bitch on wheels. You know, she has no care for them for them kids. Even though they're grown, she ain't got no care for them. If their names is not Nick and Victoria, she do not care. Let's put it like that. Um, and even Chelsea, you know, because Victor wanted Chelsea to just stay the night at the ranch or whatever with Connor. And after her little conversation with Nikki, Chelsea really didn't want to stay there at that point. She was like, we'll just go to a hotel or whatever and stay there. But, you know, Nikki apologized or whatever and started to get some act right. Because it's ridiculous for you to sit there and act like that. But you want to sit there and call Connor your grandson. But you don't even claim Adam as your son or your stepson. So how is Connor your grandchild? When you don't even claim his father. Hell, you don't even like his father. Um, And then she always want to huff and puff because Victor wants to help his son. Like, you know, Victor's doing the best that he can for him. You know, he really wants to genuinely help his son. And he's doing the best. He's doing the best that he can. And like he told Nikki and Chelsea, now is the time to rally around Adam and give him some family support and be there for them to the best of their ability. Because um, like Victor told him, Adam needs their help now more than ever. And he does, you know, he might push them away or whatever. But Victor knows that, you know, just walking away and letting him figure this out on his own is not the answer. No matter how many times Adam push you away, you got you still got to be here, period. Um, this was a decent little episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. And I will see you all later. Peace.